Abigail, it is my pleasure to introduce our very first KN Sports guest, Akeem Aliou. Akeem has had a long career in professional hockey, but it's a different kind of ice sport that he's been making news in recently. Akeem, welcome to the show. So happy to be on with you. Yeah, and uh, you know, you're going to be on Battle of the Blades. That's, that's, that's amazing. Uh, how did CBC talk you into this one, uh, Akeem? Um, I uh, started the conversation with PJ Stock, who's been around um, the show for um, some years now, and um, he convinced me that it was a good platform for me to kind of spread my message and what I'm trying to do in the game of hockey and just helping people in society with uh, racial inequalities and, and, and things like that. So um, I thought there would be no better platform than CBC and Battle of the Blades. Um, and I'm, I'm super glad that I did it. I've just had a blast on the show and just so many great people and I'm having a really good time. What is it like being a part of a skating competition on television? Any embarrassing moments you want to share? Um, I would say knock on wood. So far it's been, uh, it's been okay um, with, the, with the performances, but obviously in the beginning I was super scared of the toe picks and um, Figure skates are a lot different than hockey skates, that's for sure. And I almost spent a couple of days um, learning how to skate again, uh, which was which was tough for me. I, I've always thought that I was a pretty good skater, but I learned pretty quickly that these figure skaters are just next level on the ice and on their blades and their edges. So it's been a learning experience, but I, like I said, I'm having a great time doing it. And I bet it was a drastic change from going from uh... – uh, playing the sport that you're used to in terms of hockey, now it's going to, to figure skating. Uh, do you have kind of a newfound respect for the sport? Oh, crazy. It's uh, it's funny. I was just telling Vanessa and David and Dylan, the rest of my team, how my um, my Instagram is full of figure skating now because I'm, I'm researching it so much and so I'm, I'm so into it. And it's just um, what a sport it is. It's about grace and, and power and balance. And it's just, it's incredible. And, these, these athletes are completely fearless um, when they're trying new techniques and new uh, new moves on the ice. So it's definitely a sport that I'm going to be watching for the rest of my life. And I'm, I'm a little disappointed that I didn't um, know how, how, how cool of a sport it was a little earlier. I've been watching the episodes and you had mentioned in the first episode of Battle of the Blades that you like to give a voice to the voiceless. What do you mean by that? Well, I think a lot of people in the world um, – don't have a platform um, to speak on some of their issues, um, maybe race issues, um, issues in the LGBTQ community, um, all sorts of issues, mental health issues. Um, and I, I just want to be somebody that inspires people to speak on um, what they believe in and, and in some of their struggles in life that nobody really knows about. So. Um, I want to use my platform to be able to give people that opportunity to, to know that it's okay um, to not be okay. Um, so that's kind of the angle that I'm coming from. And I want to, I want to kind of make a, a, a topic, uh, uh, change the topic a bit. Uh, you talked about giving a voice to the voiceless. Uh, when I was uh, first started with Kids News, I did a story on athletes involvement in politics. Uh, it was a story of great interest to me. Uh, and who better to talk about it than you? <laughs> Um, do you think that athletes uh, uh, deserve the type of power uh, to share their opinions and to share their thoughts on various issues? Because there are uh, numerous people that may think otherwise. Yeah, 100%. Obviously, I think uh, that rhetoric started with the current president of the U.S. Um, and the ideas that he shares of athletes just sticking to their sports, but I think athletes have such a platform, like I, like I said, and a responsibility because of their following and, and people that trust in what they're saying to use that for the better good of society. So um, I, I, there's probably not many people on earth that are more popular than the high profile athletes and um, people follow their lead. So I think it's important that if an athlete is speaking out on positive change in society and in the world for for people to take it serious and to listen um, to what they're saying. And um, I think this is the first time in history, obviously to this level, obviously we've always had the Muhammad Ali's and um, those type of athletes that have spoke out on, on issues in society. But I think this is the first time ever in such a collective, um, it's a collective thing that's going on right now where uh, more, more are speaking on issues than not speaking on issues. And 
I think that's super important. I think that's just going to drive the message home. The NHL players use the Black Lives Matter movement to postpone games during the NHL playoffs. Do you think that that did anything? Well, I think it was the, the message that was trying to be conveyed, um, obviously from my group with the Hockey Diversity Alliance and um, players in the game, was that there's more important things in society um, that are going on in the game of hockey. And um, I think, obviously, other sports felt that – um, felt the same thing, and the NHL was a little late, but I think at the end of the day, they did the right thing. And like I said, we, we need to shine a light on bigger issues than sports. Um, and like I said, obviously, the hot topic of racial equality and um, everything that's going on is, is should take priority over playing hockey games. And, and uh, the Arizona Coyotes, uh, they recently drafted a player uh, – uh, who admitted to bullying a black kid with uh, de- uh, developmental disabilities. Uh, you have experienced racism and abuse in hockey. The Coyotes originally said this was an opportunity to teach diversity and inclusion, but on Thursday, uh, October 29th, they announced that they are cutting ties with the player and have renounced his rights. What do you think about, uh, what do you think of their pick, uh, initial justification, and, and their recent uh, decision? Well, for me, um, I think the most important thing, the way I look at it, is that everybody should be given a fair opportunity. Um, I believe in second and third chances for kids that have made mistakes um, growing up. I mean, I've made mistakes. We've all made mistakes. But um, when the mistake is as big as his was and it was a continuous pattern of what he was doing, I think it tells a lot about the person. Um, And I don't believe that there has been – from my understanding of the situation and diving a little deeper into it over the last couple of days, I don't think there's been enough remorse shown on um, the part of the player. Um, And I think that's important. Um, The only way to learn, uh, to start to learn from your mistakes is to, to accept responsibility for what you did. Um, And, and, and to kind of bring it first full circle, I truly believe that if a player of color did that, um, he would have never got drafted to the NHL. So, My whole thing is I think everybody needs to be given a fair opportunity and that's in making mistakes and being able to move on. And the way sports are right now, I think that um, white players and Caucasian players are given more of a rope um, than people of color. Saying that, do you think hockey has a problem with racism? Um, I think that hockey is a subconscious bias um, against whatever is not deemed their own. and I, I do believe that hockey is a little bit of an old boys club where if you're either in, you're in. If you're not in, you're not in. Um, so I, I believe that it's there's a lot of good people in the game, 100%. I've met a lot of my best friends and a lot of people in uh, managerial positions and all that um, that are great people. But I think there's a subconscious bias because hockey is known as a white sport. And um, that's why I think a lot of um, decisions are swayed towards um, Caucasian players. And – uh, when you talk about how uh, the NHL has a subconscious bias, uh, we saw that many, various sports return uh, uh, during the summer, any, uh, M- NBA, uh, MLB, uh, NF- uh, NFL just uh, recently. And uh, I found a lot of them made it clear what their stance was on uh, the amount of social justice uh, the issues uh, in our society today. Uh, how do you feel about the way uh, the NHL has been handling this in a historical standpoint? And uh, how do you feel? Uh, what do you think that they can do in order to be uh, more inclusive? Yeah, I mean, I always, I mean, it's, I guess I've been professional for 11 years and then I played in the OHL four years before that. And so I've been around pro sports for almost well, 15 years now. And it always seems like the NHL is kind of late to the dance on most major issues that are uh, confrontational um, and are sensitive issues. Um, and I, I don't, obviously this time it, was, it wasn't any different. Um, I, I think first things first is like I said in the beginning, I think it's to admit that our game has a problem. Like when, when any game is 95% white, like you know you have a problem. And that problem is attracting a, di- attracting a different demographic of player. Um, to be excited and to want to play the game of hockey. And um, kids of color don't see themselves playing the game. So that's why the, that's why there, there's, there isn't so many kids of color. And then obviously opportunity 
and the economic barriers that come 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 into that as well. Um, so, like I said, I think the first thing we need to do is to get into these marginalized communities and allow kids to have an opportunity to be, to be successful. Because in doing so, I think the only thing that'll do is grow our game to be as good as it is. Because if there's more people playing the game, the game of hockey is just going to be better overall. You have your own foundation called Time to Dream, and you're currently skating for it on Battle of the Blades. But I want to know, what is your dream for the future of hockey? Yeah, my uh, obviously, it's uh, it's for every kid, no matter what race, gender, economic background, um, to just be able to see themselves playing the game of hockey. Um, I think that would be something special to see um, kids that look all different sorts of ways to be, to be able to come together and play the best game in the world. I truly believe it is the best game in the world, but it's also a game that's got the most potential to grow and in grow. That's exactly what I'm saying. And, and is it attracting a, a new demographic of, of kids that don't look like the kids that are playing now? And uh, you, you're also the founder of the hockey uh, uh, diversity Alliance. Um, and I understand that, uh, you decided to work independently. You didn't decide to collaborate uh, with the NHL on this. Can you expand to me uh, on why you decided to make this decision? Well, um, we, we started off in conversations with the NHL and we wanted to work with the NHL, but we just felt that they weren't showing enough interest um, to push the conversation forward and to want to come together and create real change. So I think sooner or later you need to I guess for lack of better words, stop wasting your time and going in circles when you understand that somebody's not on the same page as you. And that's where we're at right now. Um, we, we continue to be hopeful that sooner or later they'll come around and want to do the right thing and, and grow our game the right way. Um, but as of right now, they're not there yet. So um, we're more than capable of doing our own thing and um, enacting real change. So that's how we're going to tackle this to know a little bit about your foundation tell me why you started that and what your hopes are for that well obviously that's near and dear to me uh, I uh, I think a lot of people in life do things uh, because of they see themselves um, with those issues right so um, I had a, a lot of barriers to come to, to 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 jump over to um, to be successful and make it to the National Hockey League and to have a career. And I think that a lot of kids are kind of ruled out of that before they even get going. Um, and it goes back to the same thing as kids can't afford to play or they feel like they're, they, they don't have the look to play hockey. They don't talk the right way. They don't, they don't look the right way, all those things. Um, and I just want to be able to give kids that wouldn't have otherwise have an opportunity to play sports because the way I look at it, I don't look at it as making it to the NHL or being an Olympian or whatever it may be. I look at it as just giving you an opportunity to be successful in life through sport. Um, uh, sport obviously teaches you a lot of things like teamwork um, and just obviously discipline. And I think a lot of kids can get an education from scholarships and things like that. So um, that's where my head is at, and uh, I'm super passionate about what I'm doing, and I'm excited to kind of watch it grow. And we, we talk a lot about uh, what you're doing right now, which is which is uh, amazing in terms of uh, uh, raising awareness in terms of diversity in the sport. I want to talk about one of the events that led up to uh, to this. Back in 2011, uh, you were invited to, uh, to a Halloween party uh, by a few of your teammates, uh, and you were asked to come late. Uh, uh, when you arrived, uh, you found your, uh, I believe it was one of, one of your equipment managers uh, dressed up as you using, using blackface. Uh, I, had, uh, I had a similar experience. Uh, someone used derogatory terms to, towards me, called me a brown face. And uh, I, at first I was confused. I didn't know what that meant. Uh, but then as I started to understand more, it's something that uh, somebody shouldn't be saying. And should be totally out of their vocabulary and just something they shouldn't even think about. Um, and I, when I first read the story, I was appalled by the fact that your teammates laughed and uh, they, they, they set you up. Uh, how, do you, how did you feel at that moment as, as a young Canadian man? Well, first of all, uh, kudos to you for um, dealing with that with such grace and um, elegance and not taking it to heart because I truly believe when things like that happen, 
the, the, the problem is not the issue is not your issue. I think it's the person doing it, insecurities and um, whatever else goes into it. So good for you. Um, obviously, it was a tough situation for me. Um, you think that your teammates are your brothers. And um, um, when you when you feel like you're not supported even by your teammates, that's a, that's a, that's a tough thing to go through. Um, the situation that happened, obviously, I think it's one of those things that are um, unfortunate things that happen in society, and, and people don't understand what their actions can um, what can, their actions can cause. So, um, I thought I dealt with that as best as I could. Um, it was what it was. It was a, a it was a learning experience. Um, oh, I'm glad that I'm able to to um, spread my message now, um, so kids know they're not alone. Like you, if if, if things like that happen to them, so. At the end of the day, like I think everything in life happens for a reason, and uh, you learn from everything and you move on. Thank you for joining us. That was really amazing. Thank you. Thank you, guys. You guys are awesome. Thank you for having me.